Hello, I'm Cameron, the rector of St. John the Divine Anglican Church, serving the Sea to Sky. I come to you today from the traditional and unceded territory of the Squamish Nation. Welcome. I am so glad you're able to join us today for this service for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost, which is going to be the last uh, Sunday that we count in this manner. Uh, next week is the Reign of Christ Sunday, and then we get into Ad Advent. So very exciting 24 this year, <laughs> 24 Sundays after Pentecost. Uh, before we get started with our service, a few announcements. One is that uh, the deadline for our uh, online auction items uh, is today, and so uh, we will be putting that out uh, in about a week's time so that that will be available for you. Um, however, if you do have an item still at home or in mind, we might be able to sneak it in if you get in touch with us this week. So please do reach out if you have something for our online auction. Uh, our nativity display, online nativity display will be coming up soon. So please get in touch with the office if there is a nativity display that you have that you would like featured so that we can share the story of Christmas with our community uh, this season. We are doing a Purdy's fundraiser again this year. And so there are uh, is an online website that you can find in the email outs as well as on our website. We also have some uh, physical catalogs available if that's what you prefer. So just get in touch with the office if you'd like one of those. We also have beautiful church calendars for 2021. And so please contact the office if you'd like one of those limited supply. Um, and also uh, to help us pray through Advent this year, which will probably at least be in part uh, at home, not together. I have uh, enlisted the help of Canon Donald Lawton, who has kindly made a number of Advent wreaths. This is this beautiful Advent wreath base. Um, we're still waiting for the candles, but uh, if you would like one of these, uh, please contact the office, uh, and we will, uh, which will help us pray our way through Advent until Christmas. We are in our stewardship month right now. I hope that you have received a stewardship material either by email or in the mail. Uh, if not, please get in touch with the office and we'll get you what you need for a pledge form. Um, you can return those to the office by email if that's something you're able to do or by mail or give us a call and we can arrange either you dropping it off or someone coming to pick it up for you. As part of our stewardship uh, month, we have different members of our community doing little stewardship moments. Uh, today's is uh, by Diane Riley, who is a newer member of our community and part of our new Whistler initiative. So uh, thank you, Diane, for agreeing to speak to us a little uh, and take it away. Hi. I'm Diane and I'm a member of the Parish of St. John the Divine. I have been asked to um, contribute a little message about my reflection on Pledge for 2021, supporting the parish. And I've been thinking and thinking on this and wanting the words to come to best express my feeling about why I know I will and why I'm going to put some uh, tangible um, measurements around uh, what and how I can give to the parish in 2021. But you know what? I can't think of anything eloquent. I just want to do and be and give. And I know that um, it's because I'm very thankful for the established and historic Anglican community in our parish and I have been for a very long time wanting to step forward, wanting to make personal connections within the community and I always thought, gosh, I'm busy, but guess what? I'm still busy, but this is the year that I'm going to do it and I look forward to um, giving and being and doing with 
others in our parish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diane. Really appreciate what you had to say there. Okay, here we go. It's time for us to pray, to worship together. So let us get ready. Close your eyes if you're comfortable with that and let's take a deep breath in and let it out. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out fear. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out anxiety. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out all those things that might be troubling you today. Breathe in the love of God and keep on breathing until you are breathing out the love of God onto the entire world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God be with you. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O God, from whose abundance all gifts and skills are lavishly bestowed, give us courage to use our talents as generously as you have given them, so that being faithful to your purpose, we may share in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our first reading is from Judges 4, 1 to 7. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Haroseth Hagoyim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up for her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinom from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by Wadi Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Our psalm today is Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hands of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he show us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich, and the derision of the proud. Our second reading today is from Thessalonians 5, verses 1 to 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness. For that day, to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanksgiving, I will glorify you all. 
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handled, handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. For from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of Christ. Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. What a great parable though perhaps one that makes us a little uncomfortable. Is this what God is like? Harsh? Reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed? The parables can be read in many ways, approached from many different angles. That's one of the things I love most about them. 
However, we can sometimes get into ruts in our thinking and interpretation of them. One of the most helpful things that I was invited to do in a class that I took on the parables to avoid these ruts was to question whether the authority figure in the story was always God. We often assume this, but is it always the case or completely the case? So as I make an approach of this parable, I ask, is this property owner God? Maybe not. What comes to my mind here in this description is not God, but one of the lines from our psalm today, we have had it more than enough of contempt, too much of the scorn of the indolent rich. The indolent rich. What a great term as we journey through a month of stewardship together. But maybe it is God. Maybe there is something to be gleaned from this image, this story that we might not expect. Kind of like the thief in the night. That's in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians we heard today. He writes, For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Interestingly, this is an image that repeats several times in the New Testament, here in this letter, in Second Peter, in Revelation, and in the Gospels. That's pretty rare, that something so clear is reflected, repeated in all of these very different places. I wonder if that means it is important. But when's the last time you prayed to God, Father of all, creator of the universe, shepherd of the lost, wounded healer, thief in the night? It's not one of our usual images, is it? It certainly is not one of mine. It's perhaps even a little unsettling for us to think of God, a thief in the night. But I think there is something beautiful to be found to be learned from this image. Maybe that God works in surprising ways, ways that we don't always see coming. Maybe that God works in ways that don't always follow all the rules or our expectations. And maybe, maybe God is coming like a thief to steal something away from us. I wonder what you pray that God might come to take away from you, from us like a thief in the night. I pray that God may come and steal my fear, my prejudice, the hardness of my heart, those times where I have not loved my neighbor as myself, or myself all that well for that matter. Come, Lord, come. Anyways, let us turn once again to this parable. Something that I notice is that this description seems to be completely in this third slave's head. Master, he says, I knew, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. This is the image of his master that he has in his head. But is it confirmed? You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? That's what the master says in response. You knew, did you? Even the master's actions don't seem to reflect this description all that well. Trusting his property to his slaves in the first place? Seeming to deal with the other two warmly and generously? I wonder if something that we might glean from this parable is the power of our minds to shape our reality. More specifically, how we talk about God, how we imagine God, matters. 
It has a real effect on our world and on our lives. If our language and imaginations paint a picture of a harsh and punishing God, that might be how we see the world, it might color how we interact with one another, how we inhabit our, our lives. If our language paints a picture of a humble, loving, merciful God, that might have a different outcome. This third one's fear seems self-fulfilling, and I think it's important to pay attention to that in our own lives. Fear. That's the other thing that stuck with me this time as I chewed through this parable. His fear. And I think that this is so important as we reflect on stewardship. Our stewardship of the gifts we have been given, our very lives, cannot be ruled by our fear. Fear of others, fear of not having enough, fear of losing power. Stewardship, I believe, is about risk. Investing, and while it's money they are talking about in this story, I think it's more than that. I think it's our life, our very being. What are we doing with it? Have we buried it in the ground out of fear? Or have we used it, invested it, planted it like seeds in the earth so that the kingdom of God may grow? This is something that the church as an institution, I think, really struggles with. And that's too bad. We want to be safe. We want a sure thing. But the way of Jesus the way of the cross is not safe. It's not a sure thing. We may lose everything. But I believe that it is well worth the risk. The church has been at its best when she has been willing to risk her power, her influence, her wealth, her very life for the gospel, to take chances. That's why I think that it is so exciting being at St. John's right now. You took a risk on a full-time minister. You took a risk on me. You are taking a risk with a brand new community in Whistler. I hope that we can lean even more into that. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Jesus said that. I pray that we may not be afraid of losing our lives. I pray that we may invest in what God is doing, trusting in and proclaiming a God who is loving and merciful, wildly generous and full of grace. We, know, we never know when things might come to an end, in any sense of that. The future is uncertain. God is coming like a thief in the night. If God came tomorrow, what would be the story that the stewardship of our gifts, of our very lives, that precious, beautiful gift that God has entrusted to us, what would that story tell? In the words of Mary Oliver, what will you do with your one wild, precious life? Whatever it is, dear friends, do not be afraid. For God is good and generous like a landowner sharing everything they have with their servants and like a thief in the night coming to take away those things that do not serve us very well any longer. And for that, I say thanks be to God. Dear friends, I invite you to join with me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. God of the universe, we thank you for our home, this fragile earth that you have entrusted to us. Help us to protect it in all its amazing diversity. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for places where there is violence and discord, thinking today especially for our neighbors in the United States. We pray for people in the many war-torn areas of the world, and particularly for refugees who have lost their homes. Merciful God, we pray for peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the world as the COVID-19 virus continues to spread. God of hope, we pray for those who are anxious, those who feel isolated, those who are ill, and those who are dying. We pray for your strength for our healthcare workers and for all who are working to keep others safe. We pray for the further development of the vaccine and when it is ready for a fair distribution of it among all the countries of the world. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for the freedom of worship. We remember those who have died for that freedom. We pray for the church, that we can be a beacon of hope in this challenging time, and that individually we can spread the love of Jesus to those all around us. In our Anglican cycle of prayer this week, we pray for St. Hilda Seashelt, the Reverend Ayub Adwar, and the Venerable Bruce Morris. St. Clement, North Vancouver, the Reverend Philippa Seagrave Pride, the Reverend Elizabeth Mathers, and the Reverend Peggy Trendle Jensen, the Deanery of Oak Ridge, the Reverend Marion Wong, Regional Dean, and here at St. John's, for our Rector, Reverend Cameron, Cameron Gutjar. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those we love and for those who are hard to love. Healing God, we pray for those who have requested our prayers. For Jessica, Muriel, Susan, Eleanor, Lori, the House Sound Women's Center, the residents of Shannon Falls Retirement Home and Hilltop House, and the patients of Squamish General Hospital. We pray for all those who have died and more recently for Marianne Hildreth, Miriam McDonald, and Gwen Taylor, and for their grieving families. Also for those who are on our hearts and minds today. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, God, that each morning you provide a new opportunity for us to follow you. We offer you the best of what we have, what already belongs to you. Let your tender mercies come to us that we might live. Amen. I lift my eyes to you, O God enthroned above. I 
keep looking to my God for mercy. Gathering our prayers and praises unto one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope Fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 